Well, there's so many practical ways that the church could uh, do the work of justice, and uh, I've seen many examples of churches doing that, whether they've opened up homes um, when you could rehabilitate girls who've been rescued from uh, sex trafficking, uh, or there's this huge number of uh, migrant laborers who've been held in plantations and places like that where the church goes and meets them every day. Maybe they do not have the expertise to rescue them, but they're at least until rescue comes, they take care of their medical needs, they take care of their educational needs while they are still in, uh, in slavery. Uh, there are churches that have opened doors where women can come in if they've been um, trapped in domestic violence, where they can come and just stay in their churches and take care of the women until they're able to find a safe place or go back to their husbands. There's so many ways that churches have taken up issues of, in, issues of injustice and fought for justice, even if it is standing by somebody in the police station. Uh, nobody would do that. But there are churches like that who stand by the members in the police station and walk, be with them while they're going through that process. Uh, but these are all few instances. There is so much more that needs to be done. And there are so many types of injustices around uh, the world. And I, I can see just from India, where we work with uh, bonded laborers or with sex trafficking, there is so much that the church can do. Uh, there are children who are picked up from the streets and put into the uh, government homes and looking for foster homes and looking for places where someone can take care of these kids, but no one comes forward. And there are no churches that are willing to accept uh, children from these government homes. So if these are areas where churches can actually be open and take up issues around whatever is in their vicinity, whatever is in their influence that they can do.